right guys, not gonna lie, there are quite a few different elements here that we have to perfect. Uh, there is the chicken, there is the rice, there is the soup, there are the sauces. Um, don't worry, we're gonna go on a bit of a journey together uh, and it is totally gonna be worth it in the end. Let's talk about the chicken first of all. I've got a couple of little you know, tips and tricks throughout this recipe that are gonna help you out a little bit. Uh, with the chicken, for me, I, a, a chicken on the smaller size is better for this. It works, uh, it cooks more evenly and more quickly uh, in, the, in the soup. This is about a 1.2 kilo chicken, so just so you know. Now, the first thing we wanna do is steal a little bit of chickeny fat and chicken skin from this guy because we need that to flavor our rice. Okay, so what you wanna do is get in here with your scissors and just chop off any little bits here at the end. You know, some little fatty bits, some skin bits, and then just save those for later. So yeah, any spare bits of fat or skin that you can find, I usually find there's like a little tiny bit just over here near the neck as well that you can grab hold of. Okay, so we've got a little bit of chicken fat and skin saved for our rice. Now what we wanna do is just give our guy a bit of a salt rub before we start poaching him. So you want a whole lot of salt here. I'm using a flaky sea salt, but you know, any kind of salt that you have at home is, is fine here. And just really kind of rub it in. And then now he's good to go. So let's have a chat about what's going on in my pot over here. And you can see that I have some stock that's already kind of a little bit warm in here. And here's the little secret, guys. If you are eating this dish in a hawker center in Singapore or Malaysia, uh, you're generally gonna have some MSG in there, usually. And so when I was making this dish at home, I'm always like, how can I make it taste more like a hawker center style dish? And I don't use MSG at home, so the secret is to use some chicken stock cubes. That's right, guys, don't go for like some fancy, you know, really expensive uh, chicken stock. You just wanna go for some chicken stock cubes. Um, I use the all natural ones, so they don't have MSG either and that is gonna start you off on the right foot here. All right, so we've got the stock cube giving us like the salty, savory umami flavors that we need for our chicken and our soup, but we need a few other things here to really make this super special, um, and that is some ginger, just a few slices. And then the other really defining characteristic for a Hainanese chicken rice, and so we've got the chickeny, we've got the gingery, and then you also need the spring oniony. Sure, it's not a word, I know, but whatever. You get what I mean. Um, so with the spring onion, I'm gonna use the pale part a little bit later on, and I just want the green tops right now. So just slice those greens and get those into your soup as well. All right, so we're now at like a super, super critical stage of our chicken rice recipe. So Hainanese chicken rice, the chicken at the end should be really soft and juicy and silky. Uh, and you get that by poaching really gently. And I mean really gently. What we wanna do is see just the tiniest, like the barest little whisper of bubbles coming up here. Uh, and I want that chicken to kind of luxuriate in that warm little bath for about 40 minutes. So while our chicken is doing its thing, we are gonna get started on making the green sauce, which is essentially like this really epic spring oniony, gingery, amazing little condiment. First of all, we wanna start off with a little bit of ginger, so just some finely chopped ginger. And then back to those spring onions we had earlier, I've got just the pale and a little bit of the green part here, and I just wanna finely chop those. Now I want a really good sprinkling of salt in here. And then you wanna pound this to like a fairly rough kind of paste. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, so this is the kind of situation that you're looking for here. Already it is smelling so beautiful, I love that ginger spring onion smell. Um, but what we need to do here is make some hot oil that's gonna pour over the top of this and make it into the sauce that we need. So what you need is a little bit of vegetable oil or canola oil or peanut oil, just like a neutral flavored oil, and then a little bit of sesame oil. And now just heat this up for a, a couple of minutes, you know, two or three minutes here. And now that I can see it's kind of just shimmering away, I'm gonna pour that over the spring onion. Oh, that's 
sizzle is so satisfying. Uh, so that heat of that oil has like released even more of the spring onion and ginger flavors. And so just give that a mix. And now we have this beautiful little, almost like it's like an emulsion really. And um, if I just have a little taste here. Mm. So much flavor there, like such simple ingredients and you have this beautiful like hint of onion and the garlic and it's salty as well. And then the sesame oil, ah, everything. Perfect sauce. I might just add a little bit more salt here just for a little bit of extra, you know, special. And then I'm gonna set that aside until later. Okay guys, so we're on to our next element of this very special chicken rice dish and that is the rice. So, so, so important. Um, how do we get that beautiful kind of like, it's almost like each rice grain should have a sheen of like chicken fat and we've got a little bit of a garlic flavor as well. So what we need to do is get started on getting that kind of chicken fat flavor. So we've got our little bits and pieces that we took off the chicken earlier. So I wanna get that into a saucepan. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil here to kind of get things going. And now turn this onto like a low-ish heat. What I want is for that chicken to have time to render out all its deliciousness uh, before it gets too brown or, or burnt. So you want these guys in here for at least 10 minutes. Okay, so while that chicken fat is doing its thing and sizzling away, uh, let's come back and have a look at our chicken. So this guy has had the 40 minutes simmering away in that soup. What I wanna do now is turn the heat off and just pop a lid on and just let him sit in there for another like 20 minutes just to make sure that the chicken is cooked all the way through but, but really gently. Again, we're going with the gentle heat, the gentle cooking. This chicken is getting so much love, my goodness. All right, so we are looking very brown and golden in here with our little chicken bits and pieces. So I'm gonna take these guys out and you know who's gonna be eating those little bits and pieces later on. Uh, that would be me. Um, but let's get back to uh, the lovely little sheen of oil and fat that we have in our pan here. This is gonna make a great base for our chicken rice. So I wanna grab my garlic. The garlic is kind of, you know, not all, I would say, not all chicken rice recipes put the garlic in here, but I like it. You could leave it out if you want to uh, and just add the rice in, but I'm gonna go with garlic. And now the rice. So I'm using Thai jasmine rice. Um, a, a long grain rice is really what you want here. Uh, now just pour that in and you really wanna give that a mix so that each little rice grain is getting a little bit of love from that chicken fat and the oil and the garlic. All right, so now this rice needs to borrow a little bit of stock from our chicken. So let's uncover this guy. And then I've got two cups of rice in here. So I want two and a half cups of the stock. And now what you wanna do is wait for that rice to kind of absorb most of the stock. You'll see what I mean. Give it about 10 minutes on like a medium heat and then we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so now you can see most of that liquid's been absorbed, but the rice is still quite firm. It's not quite cooked through. So I want you to put the lid on and now turn the heat down really low and let that cook for another 10 minutes. All right, so let's get back to our chicken, guys. I know, so many different elements today, but we're nearly there, I promise. Uh, now have a look in here. You can see that the leg joints are kind of starting to come away from the body. Now that tells me that that chicken is pretty well cooked. Um, I don't want to overcook it for sure. So let's get him out. And now while our chicken's cooling down a little, I'm gonna strain off our stock. Okay, so now we're getting to the stage where, you know, like you're in the hawker center and the guy's like bang, 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 bang. He's like chopping the chicken. Okay, so we're not quite gonna, you know, do, do it like that, but uh, I'll show you an easy way you can do it at home. Uh, grab a hold of your chicken. Try not to like break that beautiful skin that's on the top of the chicken breast. Now you wanna start by getting in here where the leg joint is. Just slice through. Oh, look at how juicy that chicken is. And it should literally almost just pull apart at the end here and then pull off that leg. Now do the other side. And 
And then for the chicken breast, you want to start through the middle or just off the center to the middle and just slice through there. And then just kind of run your knife down along that bone and just keep pulling that breast off. And then just a little snap through the end. And there you have your chicken breast. Same on the other side. And now guys, this is totally what I'm talking about with, you know, that beautiful, just cooked, you know, still juicy kind of chicken. Like you can see that that skin is really nice and shiny and, you know, that meat looks really nice and tender, not overcooked at all. One last thing we're gonna do here though, to give our chicken a little extra special something something is um, add a little bit of sesame oil. So I just want you to drizzle some sesame oil and rub that all over. Okay, so now that this chicken has literally been like massaged, poached, all things, <laughs> we're gonna slice, finish off the slicing just through the breast here. And through that thigh joint. And now guys, we are finally ready to assemble our dish. Let's have a look at our rice. Now, you just want to use a fork and fluff up those grains. And then scoop some rice into a little bowl. I mean, you know, this is totally OTT, but like it's the way you get it in a hawker center. So, you know, I like to do it this way. And then tip that out onto your plate. And now you want some of your chicken. I like to do a mix of sliced breast and thigh meat here. And now for the condiments, we've got our green sauce that we made. And then I always like to have a little bit of chili here. I'm just using like a sambal olic, but you could use a Chinese garlic and chili paste as well. Still what's fine for this one, guys. And some cucumber. Now don't forget that amazing chicken broth. And then one Final thing, just a little drizzle of some sweet soy sauce on the chicken. And there you go guys, a very classic Hainanese chicken rice. Yes, a lot of steps, a lot of bits and pieces to get right, but wow, this is really gonna be worth it. All right, I want some chicken, all the bits and pieces. Okay, so literally like the perfect mouthful right now. Oh, so good. Mm. Guys, if you have never tried Hainanese chicken rice, you need to make this. I mean, there is so much going on there. That amazing like spring onion, ginger sauce, and then that chili. Mm. And the chicken is so beautifully silky and soft. It's just perfect. And then kind of had a little, have a little mouthful of soup in between. Mm. Perfectly soothing and chickeny and amazing. Wow, guys, this really is a keeper dish. Oh, I am going to enjoy eating this entire thing. Mm. Yum. <laughs> Juicy, tender chunks of chicken on top of rice that is so full of flavor, you will not even believe. And then the spicy sauce. Oh, this is like the ultimate chicken rice. Okay guys, so this is like one of my all time, most favorite Thai street foods. It's khao man gai. Now, obviously the traditions of this dish come from that very famous Chinese version, the Hainan chicken rice. But in Thailand we do things a little bit differently, but there's still the same four components. We've got the chicken, we've got to get that perfect. We've got the rice, uh, we've got the soup, and we've got the sauce. Now the sauce is a little bit spicy here in Thailand. Anyway, let's get on to the cooking part. So I'm gonna start off off with some ginger. So we're going to start off making the broth and the chicken first. 
So I just need some slices here. And then I'm starting off with some chicken stock here. I just think that it adds a bit more extra flavor when you're poaching the chicken in chicken stock rather than just water. So I'm gonna put my ginger into there and I want some spring onions as well. And just to make sure we get all of the beautiful spring onion aroma and flavor, I'm gonna just give it a quick bruising. Okay, that goes in as well. And now the chicken. So before we do anything with our chicken, what I wanna do is just cut off any extra bits of fat and skin because I'm gonna render that chicken fat down and that is gonna give us so much flavor in our rice. Unbelievable. So don't skip this step. Okay, just take a little bit off the back here. And now anywhere you can see excess skin or fat, just trim that off. Okay, let's turn this guy around and there's usually quite a bit in the neck area here. So I've ended up with around a quarter of a cup full of bits and pieces here. If your chicken was particularly lean, then perhaps start off with some skin on chicken thigh, take the skin and the fat from that. Um, you don't need too much. Anyway, I'm gonna get my chicken now and I want a good, decent amount of salt on here. Just rub that in. Okay, now the chicken goes into the hot stock. And now, depending on the size of your pot, you might need to add a bit more water here. I need to add a little bit more. I just want enough liquid to come up just almost to the top of that breast. Okay, so just bring that up to a gentle simmer and I'm gonna put a lid on, not completely covering, just a little bit of jar and just let that chicken cook for about an hour or until it's cooked all the way through. Now let's get started on the rice part. So all those little bits and pieces that we cut off the chicken, I'm gonna get that into a saucepan, just sprinkle with a little bit of salt and then just over a medium kind of heat, just wait for that chicken fat to melt and render the chicken skin to turn a lovely golden color. Okay, so this is looking good. You can see we've got a couple of tablespoons there of rendered chicken fat. So I'm gonna pull some of these pieces out. And don't worry, these little crispy bits are not gonna go to waste. They will be eaten by me. <laughs> okay, I don't mind leaving a few bits and pieces in here. Just want to take most of them out. And the next bit of like flavor base that we want for our rice is garlic. So I've got some finely chopped garlic here goes in. Now don't have your heat too high here. I don't want to burn the garlic. I do want it to infuse the chicken fat with its lovely flavor. Uh, and I do want it to turn a, like a lovely golden brown. So while that's happening, I'm just gonna have a quick check on my stock. And what you'll need to do here from time to time as that chicken is cooking is just scoop off some of this scummy stuff at the top. That way you'll get a really nice, beautiful, clear broth at the end. Okay, let me check on my garlic. Now that is looking really good. We've just got a little slight touch of golden brown there. So I'm gonna add in my rice. Now I'm using Thai jasmine rice, but any long grain rice will do. Give that a mix. I really want all of those rice grains coated in that beautiful chickeny, garlicky oil. Okay, now at this point, I wanna add in some of the stock that the chicken has been simmering in. And I've got about two cups of rice here. And generally I use about two and a half cups of liquid for two cups of rice. Okay, now give this rice a stir and really use your spoon to scrape up the bottom of the pan because I want to make sure that all of that lovely chickeny stuff that was stuck to the bottom comes up and infuses my rice with flavor. Okay, now to make sure we have the most beautiful, tender and not gluggy rice, this is what we need to do. Just bring this up to a simmer. I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna leave it slightly ajar because I want some of that liquid to evaporate out of the pot. And that needs about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see how we're going. Okay, let's come back to our chicken and because we stole some of that chicken stock for the rice, I'm gonna top it up with a little bit more water. Just leave that guy simmering away. Okay, so we've got our chicken going, we've got our broth or our soup going and we have our rice going. Last thing we need to do is the sauce and here is where the Thai version differs from the Chinese version. So this is a very typical Thai style of sauce, I would say. It's spicy, a little tangy, a little salty. So I'm gonna start off with some garlic. Pop that guy open, peel that off. And now the root part of the coriander. So that's simply this part down the bottom here. I know some of you have written to me and said, well, your supermarket only sells the stem and not the root. That's okay, use some of the stem instead of the root part. And then some ginger as well. Just peel that with a spoon. 
and a little pinch of salt to help break down some of those fibres. And now you want to pound this to a very smooth, fine paste. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. Okay, so the next ingredient is really what gives this sauce its very special Thai character. Um, it's always used in this sauce and it's called Dao Jio. Uh, it's basically soybean paste. So you can see here, you can see the little bits of the soybean in there. And you can find this in a lot of Asian grocers or Thai supermarkets. It looks like this, this is just, you know, a standard brand. Um, but what you're looking for is where it says soybean paste. There's a Chinese version as well, you could use that, but do try Try and seek it out. It really does give a really beautiful salty umami flavor. So that goes in here. And then I want some soy sauce. Okay, and then this one here is a sweet dark soy sauce. So it's a little thicker than standard dark soy sauce. And in Indonesia, you would call this one ketchup manis. So uh, there you go, look out for that one at your Asian grocer too. And then I want some vinegar as well and a little bit of sugar. Okay, let's give that a mix and a taste. Mm, I love that. It's got that garlicky coriander hit mm, and then like tangy and salty. Perfect. Now what it does need is the chili spice. I need some heat here. So I'm using these bird's eye chilies. These guys are quite fiery. Okay, and there you go. Now each stall in Bangkok that sells Kalman Gai will always have their own version of this. And I love trying them all because to me it's like the hallmark of a really good Kalman Gai joint if it has a really good sauce. Oh, and I almost forgot, I want a little bit of fresh coriander in there as well. Okay, so this chicken has totally been making my stomach growl for like an hour now. It smells beautiful. Now I just want to have one last go at taking off any of that stuff on the top. And I want to get my chicken out onto a chopping board. And now just... Pick out all of those aromatics in there. I don't bother straining this one. I don't mind if it's a, a little rustic. Um, but up to you if you would like to strain it, you can. Now you'll want to check this for seasoning because of course we had a couple of top ups with the water. So it's going to be up to your own kind of personal taste how much salt you want to add here. Mm, it's so chickeny and comforting. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. Mm, perfect. And just that little extra bit of salt really makes the ginger and the spring onion flavors really sing in there. Mm, beautiful. Now I want to check on our rice here and I can see that the liquid's been absorbed and the rice grains here look super tender and not very gluggy. But the secret for whenever I'm cooking jasmine rice is I put the lid back on and then I turn the heat off but I leave the pan on the warm sort of stove top. And that allows the steam to really permeate evenly throughout that rice right down to the bottom of the pot and then everything is perfectly cooked. So you wanna leave that for a good five to 10 minutes. Okay guys, so now let's break down the chicken. There's a little bit of skill here, but I'm gonna walk you through it. It's all gonna be good. Okay, start off with the legs. Okay, now be careful here. The chicken is hot if you don't have asbestos hands like me. Maybe just let it cool down a little bit. I'm just gonna go straight on in there. Okay, so you just wanna slice through that skin in between the leg and the breast. Flatten that out a little bit. Just kind of bend those legs down a bit. And that way we can kind of see where the joint is here. And I wanna cut through that so it's a nice clean cut. Now there's a little part in here called the chicken oyster underneath. I just want to make sure my knife is catching that because that's a really tasty part. Okay, uh, and now the wings. And the same thing here, just kind of pull a wing out and then cut through the joint. Okay, now to make everything easier when we're dealing with the chicken breast part, I want to take the wishbone out first. So I'm going to get my knife and just slice through in here and on the other side as well. And then just use your fingers to kind of feel where the bone is and pull it out. Okay, so there's your wishbone. And when I was little, my mom used to always save these and my dad and I would have the little like pinky competition, you know, where you pull the wishbone and the person has the biggest piece gets to make a wish. Anyway, a little bit of trivia you probably didn't need to know about. Uh, now, the rest of the chicken breast. So you wanna slice directly through the middle. And the whole idea here is that we just want really beautiful large pieces of that breast without sort of mucking it up and tearing it up too much. So I just kind of run my knife 
against the bone, pulling the meat away as I do. Now so that we can get some really thin slices of chicken and also to kind of break down and tenderize the chicken breast, I'm gonna just give it a light pounding here with my pestle. And now I can thinly slice that. Okay, now we're ready to get everything out onto our plate. Let's have a look at our rice. Now the other trick here is to always use a fork to fluff up the rice so that you're not breaking up the grains too much, which you can do if you just use a spoon. Now I just want some rice and then my chicken and then some of our beautifully spicy tangy sauce. A little bit of cucumber as well. And then don't forget about that hot chickeny soup. So there you go guys, a street food classic you can totally make at home. And of course, I'm gonna test it out here, make sure you guys are up for a good recipe. Mm. That sauce and that chicken is so soft and tender. Mm. Yum, this dish makes me so happy. Fragrant, savory, spiced rice and chicken. This one is a Thai food classic and I'm gonna show you how to make my version at home. This is Khao Mok Gai. I love this one and it's very unique because it has a very different flavor profile to most Thai dishes. This one has lots of rich dried spice flavors and curry powder flavors. It's really awesome. All right, let's get going on the marinade paste first. So we start off with quite classical Thai ingredients. First of all, we want some garlic and some coriander root. And now some ginger. Just a little dash of salt here. And you just wanna pound this to a smooth paste. Okay, so this is the kind of situation that you're looking for here. I'm gonna get that straight out into a big bowl. And now come some of the ingredients that you don't usually find in Thai cooking. So this dish has its origins in the Muslim community here in Thailand. And so some of the ingredients are not as familiar to our Thai everyday cooking. I'm gonna add in some yogurt and some curry powder. And again, I think a lot of people think of Thailand, they think of curries, but we don't often use curry powder as an ingredient. We generally rely on fresh ingredients like lemongrass and galangal and chilies for our curry paste. There are some dishes with curry powder, obviously this is one of them. And I want some fish sauce and some turmeric. The turmeric here really is one of the defining flavors and colors of this dish, so it's really important. And just give that a mix. Now I'm gonna add in my chicken pieces here. And for me guys, it's gotta be dark meats for this one. It's gotta be drumsticks and chicken thighs because they tend to remain juicier while they're cooking in your big pot. Now just give that a mix. Now, if you're really organized, it would be great if you could leave this to marinate overnight, but I generally tend to not be that organized or have that much time, so I'm gonna pretty much use mine straight away. Now, the traditional thing to do here would be to deep fry that chicken. I'm gonna do it in a little bit more of a convenient way today. I'm just gonna shallow fry it in a little bit of oil. Now, take your chicken pieces. Now, the only way to do this really is with your hands, so, gonna have to get a little dirty here. Just scoop off most of that marinade because I'm gonna use that marinade a bit later and get your chicken straight into the pan. Now the idea here is that we wanna get a really beautiful deep dark color on our chicken pieces. One, it just looks great. Two, it starts to develop a really beautiful flavor when we get that caramelization. You'll see it. Now remember, don't throw that marinade away. We need that for later. Okay, so a couple of minutes and let's turn these guys over. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that beautiful color. Mm. Now a couple more minutes on this second side. And now just transfer that chicken out of the pan. It doesn't need to be cooked through. It'll finish cooking a bit later on.
Now would you take a look at that gloriousness happening in the bottom of that pan there. That is some good chicken fat and we are not going to waste it. So I just want a good few spoonfuls of that. And then I'll just get this pan cleaned up so we can continue on. Okay, so I've got my clean pan. Pour that chicken fat back into there. And now let's go in with some onion. And always when I'm sweating down onions like this, I add a little dash of salt. And you'll notice that throughout a lot of the dishes that I cook, there's some seasoning that happens every step of the way. We seasoned our paste at the beginning, we added fish sauce into the chicken, a little bit of salt here, and that really helps to develop the flavors in the finished dish. Now once these onions have had a few minutes to soften up in here, now these onions are soft, a little sweet now, I'm gonna add in some tomato. And I wanna give this tomato a little bit of time to kind of get all mushy make friends with that onion. Okay, so see how that tomato is a little bit pulpy? Now we want to add in the rice. This is a Thai jasmine rice. Any long grain rice will do. Now I'm going to sprinkle in some crispy fried shallots. Now that chicken marinade we saved earlier, that goes in here. This dish reminds me so much of an Indian biryani. In fact, a lot of people call this Thailand's version of biryani. And now some spices. You want a cinnamon stick, some green cardamom pods, and a couple of bay leaves. And some chicken stock. Already those beautiful spices are really making my kitchen smell delicious. Now we nestle those chicken pieces back into the pan, nice and snug in there. Now put the lid on, turn the heat down a smidge because I just want a gentle bubble on that liquid. So in the meantime, we're going to make a little minty sauce to go on at the end. Now you would have heard me say this before, but it's often the condiments that make the dish here in Thailand. So don't skip this one. What you want is a big old lot of mint here and some coriander and a little spicy kick. I want a green chili here. This one's fairly fiery. And now some white vinegar, dash of sugar and a little pinch of salt. And blend that till it's really nice and smooth. Okay, so this is what you're after. And wow, that beautiful, fresh mint smell is so lovely. And that color, oh, so joyful. Mm. I love that so much. It is just like an instant brightener. That beautiful tangy vinegar infused with all those herbs and just that little touch of sweetness. Oh, and that little touch of spice. Perfect. Right, so the only part about this dish that sucks is waiting while the smell in your kitchen is so delicious. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. Let's take a look. Beautiful, that rice has soaked up all of that flavor, that chicken is cooked through. Now, my little trick here is to just fish out the chicken and pile it up in a corner over here. And that gives us a little bit of space to fluff up our rice. Before I get to that though, I'm just gonna pull out some of these Spices that I can see, the cardamom pods, bay leaves, cinnamon stick, and then using a fork, just get in there and fluff that rice. Now I start off by scooping the rice on the top and then have a look down the bottom there, you can see we've got some really dark, crusty bits of rice. That's my favorite bit. I just like to kind of scoop that up and mix it through. Any really dark bits, take those out and leave those on the side. I kind of sneak them and eat them myself. Now that's looking good. And we are ready to go, my friends. So pile up a nice bit of that gorgeous sunshine yellow rice. A Couple of pieces of chicken. And the finishing touches. A little sprinkling of coriander, some more crispy fried shallots, and that epic green sauce we made earlier, and then a little dash of sweet chili sauce. And that, my friends, is one homemade chicken rice dish that is so comforting. Even just the smell of it cooking is ridiculously comforting for me. Let's have a look. I like to get the perfect mouthful always. So a little bit of chicken, 
some rice. Don't forget those sauces. Holy smokes. That whole combination of flavors is just insane. Oh, that beautiful rice, those spices, the chicken, but then that real pop of vinegar herbiness at the end. Just like seriously amazing. Oh, I love this kind of home cooking. Simple. Yeah.